Welcome to Cadwell Park for the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Series. And Lindsay, we've got a continuation of a theme happening here this weekend. We do. Brian Chandler so far has started on pole for every single round this entire season. Quite intrigued to see if he can continue the streak. It's going to be interesting to watch what happens. It's over to Andy to take you through all of the action. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, uh, Brian Chandler may have missed the season opener at Brands Hatch, but yeah, since then he's been dominant, hasn't he? Three poles, three victories at Pembrey. He's back at the front here as well with Nick Dunn alongside, Joe Marshall Burks and Matt Pickford are on row two, ahead of Simon Fleet, Alex Miller, Jake Swan Dixon, and Javier Brook, whilst Clyde Powells and Liz Walton round out the 10 car field. Well, the conditions, I'm afraid to say, are miserable. It is pouring with rain. The circuit is very wet indeed. This place is hard enough in the dry, so this is going to be a real, real challenge for the drivers over the course of the next 20 minutes. But the lights go out, they scrabble for grit, and the first of three MX-5 Super Series races this weekend gets away with a good start made by Joe Marshall Burks, but there just isn't anywhere to go. Brian Chandler had the gap on the inside, and he will lead them into the first corner. Nick Dunn and Marshall Burks will go wheel to wheel for second, but the red car of Dunn will go through move into second position or hold on to second position I should say so the big uh, the top three or four there I think staying as they were there is Clyde Powell's number 15 car who is one of uh, several Masters contenders here this weekend indeed half the grid is Masters contenders actually there are five Masters contenders here this weekend the highest placed of those on the grid was Matt Pickford in the yellow car fourth on the grid and he is no longer fourth in the race. Look, he's dropped down to sixth position now. Alex Miller is ahead of him. So too Simon Fleet. So the blue car of Simon Fleet now the leading master already gaining ground. Now Nick Dunn going after Brian Chandler here in the early stages as the drivers just try and find out where the grip is in these very, very wet conditions. Qualifying earlier on today was dry, so they haven't yet really had any time to find out where the grip is or in the case of Nick Dunn there, maybe finding out where the grip wasn't because he was very sideways coming out of the gooseneck. On board with Matt Pickford now, dropping down the hill into Mansfield corner. It's astonishing how the conditions have changed. Less than an hour ago, it was bright and sunny and nice and uh, warm here at Cadwell Park. And unfortunately now it is very wet indeed. And Nick Dunn trying to find the grip on the outside. Now that's where the grip ought to be in theory in these wet conditions. And it might just work because he's up the inside down towards the hall bends. You don't want to go side by side through there in the dry though, let alone the wet. And Nick Dunn sensibly backs out of it. So Chandler hangs on for now. Certainly in the early stages here, Nick Dunn seems every bit as quick as Chandler, the race leader. Final couple of corners they go, and off goes Alex Miller. Alex Miller there from fourth position is off the road, and Nick Dunn is nearly off as well, as I think he touched a white line or something going down the hill uh, into Barn Corner. So Miller off the road from fourth. That promotes Simon Fleet into fourth position, but Alex Miller had made a good start. He started sixth. He was into fourth place already was going after the leading three, but that will no longer be the case. So Brian Chandler survives the opening lap of racing in the race lead. With Nick Dunn in second place, Joe Marshall works third, as it was on the grid. Matt Pickford was fourth on the grid, but he's now behind Simon Fleet, as we've said. Those two have swapped over now. Back out of Charlie's. Avoid that curve on the exit. You can run over it in the dry, but not in the wet. That will fire you off the road quicker than you know what's happened, because it is like ice in the wet. The track itself is slippery enough the painted red and white curbs. Stay away from painted, because wet paint is slippery. And uh, the curbs, the white lines, even the grid markings sometimes can present a challenge in the wet conditions. There's Simon Fleet working his way through the number 21 car. And these cars all run on grooved tyres anyway, so they'll be running on exactly the same tyres that they run in in the dry conditions. No tyre changing, so at least tyre choice wasn't an issue, but setup is crucial. If you have your car set up too stiff, particularly at the rear, they can be a real handful, and I'm wondering whether that's the case for Nick Dunn, because his car is sliding around all over the place. It's understeering quite well as well through uh, Mansfield there, but he's staying with Brian Chandler actually for the time being. Brian Chandler, who uh, won all three races last time out at Pembrey, he also won all three races the last time he raced in the Super Series before that, uh, up at the north of Wales in Anglesey, in very similar conditions. It was sodden there as well, I seem to remember, when he uh, did the hat-trick last season. So, Brian likes the wet. He likes most conditions, though. And Brian is one of those drivers that you know will be at the sharp end, regardless of what the championship or what the car is, or what the conditions are. It's a great rearward facing camera, then, from the pole sitter. To try and make it four victories in a row. Nick Dunn, at the moment, at least, seems every bit as quick as him. And if he can just stay with Chandler, 
He doesn't need to execute an overtake, he just needs to try and force a mistake. And in these conditions, even the best can make mistakes. So Brian Chandler certainly not infallible here. And Nick Dunn will be hoping to try and force an error out of that number 176 car in front. So back down towards the first corner they go then. And on to another lap. These two starting to get away slightly now from Joe Marshall Burks behind them. He's sort of dropping into no man's land a little bit in third place. And Charlie's done not using anything like the, uh, the entire width of the road there. Really being circumspect with his uh, use of the curbs. He wants to stay on the drier or the less wet sort of part of the road as well, which is starting to get cleared of standing water a little bit more now. There's Joe Marshall Burks in third. Still fourth position. And then fifth position is the recovering Alex Miller, so that could be another battle to keep an eye on before too long. I reckon Alex might just have the pace to catch Simon before the race is over. So out of Chris Kerr, down towards the gooseneck. This very, very tricky, this fearsome part of circuit on what is in, in general a very fearsome circuit, Cadwell Park. There are no easy corners here, and there are no corners where you can make a mistake and get away with it, really, especially in the wet. If you go onto that crash, you're probably going to hit something solid, at the very least lose a lot of time. Nick Dunn losing time here to Brian Chandler as well. He is dropping back now slightly from the race leader, so Chandler... Oh, makes a mistake there, gets very sideways indeed, and that could hand the lead away. It does! Nick Dunn goes through. Well, that was the curse of the commentator, wasn't it? Through goes Nick Dunn into the race lead, and that was the mistake that I said even someone of Brian Chandler's experience could make. He just, I think, got a wheel on the white line or the grass turning into the mountain, locked the rear brakes up, and he did well, actually, keep, to keep it on the black stuff. But he went so wide and had to go slow, so slowly to avoid going off altogether that it has allowed Nick Dunn through. So can Dunn now escape? Well pace that we were seeing from Chandler over the last few laps is anything to go by. I don't think Dunn's going to be able to pull away, but Chandler is going to have to really work hard to find a way past him. Across the start-finish line, on to the next lap they go. And Nick Dunn, of course, now, though, has the big benefit, which is he's running in clean air. Now, that's useful at the best of times, but in the wet, it means that you are the only driver out there who does not have any spray to contend with. And that means Dunn has clear vision of what's going on in front of him, which is always useful to have, particularly in the wet, because sometimes when you're running in the spray, you can't spot where the standing water is, or sometimes even where the edge of the road is. So now that he's got this clear vision, I wonder whether that might just help him to go a little bit more quickly. Yeah, he's certainly keeping the margin to Chandler for the time being. Brian with his headlights on, though, will be to try and form another attack here. Yeah, the race or very sideways there, Nick Dunn. Qualifying, Chandler was 1.2 seconds quicker than Nick. So it goes to show that the wet is a true leveller. Some drivers just naturally have a driving style that suits this, these conditions. Some of them may have set their cars a little bit more conservatively for the wet conditions. The weather's been a bit changeable this afternoon. This rain sort of came out of nowhere. So it may well be that a lot of them had a dry setup on the car and that's catching them out. It's a big, big moment in the background there for, I think that that was... Javier Brook, as we were on board there. Race leaders there down towards the mountain. This is where it all went wrong for Chandler a lap ago. On this occasion, he looks a bit neater than Nick Dunn, if anything, though. He's starting to maybe close back in on the race leader. Over the hill, no air underneath the wheels at the mountain in these conditions. They're not quite going quickly enough. The trial loop, you expect to see these cars getting a little bit airborne in that part of the circuit. Floating away through the wall bends. Absolutely no room for limit there. It's almost like a street circuit, that part of the circuit, so close to the barriers. And then through Barn Corner, Brian Chandler looking ominous now, though, behind Nick Dunn. He's starting to rally back towards the race leader here. Joe Marshall Burks refusing to drop too far back in third, and likewise, Simon Fleet in fourth is having a decent run. Then you get the first big gap back to Matt Pickford, who I think is running in fifth position. It's at, um, behind him, Jake Swan Dixon. Jake, I think, we saw having that moment curve down the hill you can see the spray there that Jake is having to contend with and he's running a few car lengths behind Pickford as well he's not even right behind him but you can't really get that close to somebody in the wet because you just cannot see where you're going because you can't even look around the car in front of you because it's just surrounded by spray really really tricky conditions out there Matt Pickford then turning through Charlie's once again and uh, Matt's been a bit of a veteran now of MX5 Super Series racing. 
podium finish next to the counter fact in Pembroke in the second of the races before unfortunately a non-finish in race three he's had a couple of non-finishes this year has Matt in fact his results are a bit up and down he was at Brands Hatch had a sixth a non-finish and a 13th and then a fourth a third and a non-finish at Pembroke and Pembroke was a real uh, return to form actually for Matt Pickford the sort of pace that we know he's capable of to get that first podium of the season will have done his confidence the world of good James Wong Dixon behind him though was not at um, Pembroke was out at Brands Hatch though and just scanning back through those results, his best finish, I think I'm right in saying, was a ninth place in race two. So he's had a couple of top tens, actually, a ninth and a tenth at Brands Hatch. Guaranteed a top ten this weekend, as long as you finish the races. But the slightly smaller entry does not mean the level of competition goes down by any means. So Pickford through the mountain, starting now to get away slightly from the cars behind him. top of the crest. Still lots of spectators watching on. The hardy British motorsport fans. It'll take more than a bit of rain to keep them away from the racetrack of a weekend. It's a nice delivery on that car, I have to say. He's a fan of that. Oh, Alex Miller <laughs> slithers out of the tight right-hand hairpin. He's just ahead of this uh, trio that is tailed by looks like number 70, Javier Brook. You can see he takes a much wider line there through Barn the wet and that is the grippier side of the road there the racing line where all the rubber gets laid down well that rubber gets very slippery actually when you put the water on it so running offline counterintuitively maybe but it uh, it can be the grippier side of the road it can be the faster way around the circuit Pickford then fending them off for now 66 is Jake Swan Dixon Charlie's once again, Jake just trying to get as close as he can here, trying to get a slipstream, he will still get that slipstream effect even in these slippery conditions and he knows that if he can get close enough to Matt Pickford he might be able to force the mistake, if Brian Chandler can get it wrong in these conditions then anybody can. Brian certainly came into this weekend the favourite and yet he's not needing this one, Nick Dunn is he's still out in front, Chandler second, Joe Marshall Burks third and Simon Fleet fourth, Alex Miller fifth and then this is the fight for sixth position. Pickford, Jake Swan Dixon and Xavier Brook, the Clyde Powells and Liz Walton somewhere behind them. Might be fairly evenly those two as well. The, uh, the fight not to be last. Ooh. Xavier very sideways there as he came through the gooseneck. Manages to uh, gather it together though. Xavier again missed the previous round at Pembrey. At Brands Hatch he had 13th in the first race, 13th in the second race. And then a sixth place in race three. So he's had a top six this year, has Javier. He's not quite going to get that at the moment unless he can start overtaking people. Oh, Pickford sideways this time. That's that little, quite significant crest actually up at the top of the mountain. And even though the car's not actually getting airborne in these conditions, it still gets light. And as the presses again on the over the crest, the, uh, the rear wheels can spin a little bit. That's exactly what happened there, I think, before Matt Pickford gathered it all together sideways again there as they really scrabble for traction out of the hairpin. There's Nick Dunn though, your race leader. You can see the extra speed that the front runners are taking out of Charlie's corner there actually. He's getting a little bit less wet out there but he's still very slippery and compared to the cars we were just following, we were being a lot more tentative. The leaders are throwing the cars around with wild abandon it would seem but Nick Dunn is sort of maintaining this gap isn't he? Chandler just can't really get close enough at the moment. Marshall Burke still third, Fleet in fourth. Burks number 99 car, another particularly good looking car. Works its way through the right hander and to Chris Kern into the news deck on board with Brian Chandler. Briefly there, looking back at uh, Joe Marshall Burks behind him. And Chandler certainly, he's not second for the want of trying, is he? He wants to be in the race lead, but he just can't quite do anything about Nick Dunn. That mistake could prove to be pivotal for Brian Chandler allowing Nick Dunn to possibly get what I believe will be his first victory. I don't recall him seeing a winning, uh, seeing a winning race in Super Series. Oh no, sideways! What a save that was from Nick Dunn, but it's allowed Brian Chandler to close right in. So again, just as I was starting to consider the possibility of Nick Dunn's first victory, he very nearly throws it away at the corner at which Brian Chandler had his moment a few laps ago. That was even more spectacular though, but he did a really good job to gather it together. And now it's game on for the race lead. Brian Chandler has been able now to bridge that few car lengths gap that had been built up. And after having
only made one or two mistakes already in this race, Nick Dunn. He may be a little rattled now, and that could be Chandler's opportunity. Out of the final corner then. Nick Dunn took a wider line through though, so carried much more momentum onto the pit straight because he can get to the throttle so much earlier. And look, you can see that he pulls out another few car lengths advantage as they cross the start finish line. Back with Chandler. Looking backwards through the first corner. River of water there running across the circuit, and that just unsettles Nick Dunn slightly as he turns into the first part of Charlie's. This double apex right hander again takes a wide line there, missing the apex intentionally so as to carry as much speed off the turn as possible. Chandler, though, already has dropped back actually to the sort of uh, distance that he was before that moment for Dunn. So Dunn actually, to me, looks like the quicker of the two, and if he could iron out a few of these little moments that he's having, he could probably be even quicker. starting to form there in the uh, background as the weather starts to turn again now from wet to dry. The circuit though is likely to stay wet for the remaining few minutes of this race. I don't think we're going to see it dry out particularly. And as I alluded to, even if it does, there will be no requirement to change tyres, but you might have to then start looking for grip in different places. My channel looking for grip right over the curb there as he walloped one of those plastic marker posts on the inside of the corner of the gooseneck. Going to turn there to stop drivers cutting corners so they're doing a good job today <laughs> stopping drivers using too much of the circuit Brian Chandler though always wants to try and uh, push things to the extreme here as indeed did Nick Dunn a lap ago at this part of the circuit he's much neater and tidy this time you can see the gap that he's pulled out over Chandler who's a bit wide over the grass and the curb there coming out of uh, the right hand element of the mountain Back towards the wall bends I think we've got time for one more lap after this so we are now well and truly into the closing stages of this race, and Nick Dunn does not look like he's going to be beaten here. Brian Chandler has tried everything. Will be ruining the mistake of his own that he made, but in fairness, they both made very similar mistakes at the same part of the circuit. The only difference is that Dunn was maybe a bit further ahead of Chandler when he made his, and was able to gather it together without losing quite as much speed. And they are indeed now showing the last lap board. So one more lap of the Cadwell Park circuit to go. 2.2 mile circuit near enough 2.189 miles the Cadwell Park um, Grand Prix circuit there are a couple of different layouts you can use here at Cadwell but this is the traditionally used full layout in all of its majestic glory that was a scary moment there for Dunn as he just got a bit wide over the curbs through Charlie's back up the hill though towards the braking zone at Park Corner and he's starting to get away again now from Brian Chandler who just hasn't been able to go after him winning margin if he can hang on that looks like being closer to two seconds which over Chandler in these conditions it is really really impressive Nick Dunn is setting out his stall as a real thorn in Chandler's side this weekend which I don't think Brian will be too disappointed about actually Brian is one of those drivers who relishes the challenge he relishes a race he doesn't really want to turn up and win everything by 15 seconds he wants to have a bit of a fight he certainly had that in the second of the three races at Pembrey last time out when Alex Miller taking the fight to him in the first and second races at the first and third races at Pembrey though Chandler did rather dominate this time around though for the first time this year Brian Chandler is not going to win a race he uh, didn't enter the three races at Brands Hack but since then at Pembrey all three races there that he entered he won from pole position Nick Dunn on this occasion has found a way past him a glimpse there of uh, Clyde Powell's going through the first quarter as Brian Chandler is chasing down the race leader, but he's not going to get there. Nick Dunn can coast it home from here, taking it decidedly more easily through the hall bends. Oh, Chandler pushing onto the flag there. A bit too aggressive with the right foot as he came out of the hairpin. Through barn corner and to the chequered flag, where for the first time, Nick Dunn is going to be a winner in the Master of X5 Super Series. He's the fifth different winner from seven races this season, and a really confident drive that was. Brilliant stuff from Nick Dunn. Second goes the way of Brian Chandler, Joe Marshall Burks is third, Simon Fleet and Alex Miller fourth and fifth, ahead of Matt Pickford, Jake Swan Dixon, Javier Brook, Clyde Powell's, and Liz Walton. Nick Dunn also set the fastest lap. It was a perfect result there for the race winner.